Okay, so let's talk about comparing and ordering rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Usually, you know, rational numbers is any number that makes sense, okay? So, you know, fractions, decimals, percents, whole numbers, integers, uh, decimals, repeating decimals, those are all rational numbers. So generally, in your book, when you hear about comparing rational numbers, what they're saying is taking numbers in a bunch of different formats, fractions, decimals, percents, whole numbers, integers, and comparing them to each other, greater than, less than, equal to, or putting them in order from least to greatest, stuff like that, okay? So that is, that's what they mean when they say comparing and ordering rational numbers. So first, I want to go ahead and talk to you about comparing, making sure we know what the signs are, what they're called, and making sure that we know the easy way to compare fractions and mixed numbers. Let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, these guys have names, okay? And it's not Sam and Bill and Todd. These guys have names. And their names come from how you read. Because when you read a math problem, you read from left to right. We are in the United States. We read everything from left to right. You are not allowed to read a problem backwards because it makes more sense to you. So because of that, this symbol, his name is greater than. Okay? His name is greater than. And this symbol, his name is less than. And the very easy way to remember which is which is that the symbol whose name is less than faces in the same direction as the letter L. So I usually do this. Okay? Hopefully, hopefully to help my students remember that the less than symbol is just like an L. You see how it spells less. And this guy you know is equal to. Now, what's the easiest way to compare fractions to each other? Now, some of you are thinking, oh, well, we have calculators, just change it to decimals. Yes, that works. Some of you are thinking, oh, well, we have to find the least common multiple and get the common denominator and pa 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 pa. And yes, that works. There's one way to compare fractions and mixed numbers that makes more sense and is easier than any other. And what it is, all you have to do is cross multiply. Check it out. Let's compare 5 sevenths to 6 eighths. Now notice, there's a positive 5 sevenths and a positive 6 eighths. We do have to worry about positives and negatives here, and I am going to get to that. All you have to do is cross multiply. You multiply the bottom of one fraction times the top of the other fraction and write the answer up in the corner. So 7 times 6 is 42. Okay? 8 times 5 is 40. Now, if they're both positive, then the fraction with the bigger number sitting on its corner, that's the greater fraction. And you put in the sign that shows that. And remember, this is called less than because we read it as 5 sevenths is less than 6 eighths. What if it's a mixed number, like 9 and 3 fourths compared to 9 and 5 ninths? Do we even care about the whole number? No, not if they're the same. And if the whole number is different, then obviously the fraction, if they're both positive, with the bigger whole number, is going to be the bigger number. It's going to be the greater number. But here they're both 9. Do we have to go into converting it to improper fraction and all that? No, we don't. They're both positive. They both have 9 as a whole number. So what's going to be the difference maker as far as who's greater or less? The fraction. So what do you do? You do the same thing. Cross multiply. 4 times 5 is? 20. 9 times 3 is 27. The fraction with the bigger number on its corner is the greater fraction. So, 9 and 3 fourths is greater than 9 and 5 ninths. Very, very, very simple. What happens if we're dealing with negatives? Let's look, take a look at this problem down here. What happens if we're dealing with negatives? We have here negative 3 sevenths compared to negative 4 elevenths. They're both negative, right? So let's go ahead and do the same thing that I've been talking to you about. What's 7 times 4? It's 28. What's 11 times 3? It's 33, right? Now, what have I been telling you? The fraction with the bigger number on its corner is the greater fraction. Except, these are what? Negatives. And what do we know about negatives? The bigger the negative number, the lesser in value. So who's the greater fraction here? If they're both negative, the fraction with the smallest number on its corner is the greater fraction. Because 
the bigger the negative, the lesser in value. So therefore, our sign goes like this. Negative 3 sevenths is less than negative 4 elevenths. Okay, so now what do we do if we have to compare two numbers that are not of the same format? In other words, we're comparing a decimal with a fraction or a mixed number with a mixed decimal. Well, the easiest way to do that, especially now that we live in the land of calculators, right? Easiest way to do that is to convert the number that's not a decimal into a decimal, okay? And then line them up by decimal point. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have here negative 5 sevenths compared to negative 0.7, okay? Well, how do we compare these? Well, let's convert negative 5 sevenths into a decimal. So once again, I'm going to do 5 divided by 7 equals, all right? And look what I get here, 0.7142857, right? So I'm just going to round a little bit, and let's just stop at uh, 0.714, okay? So let's call this 0.714, negative 0.714, because it's a negative fraction. And let's copy this one down here, and you, you have to make sure you line up the decimal points. So this goes negative 0.7 here. Now, if you remember what you're supposed to remember about equivalent decimals, empty spaces in decimals are just like what? Zeros. So I can fill these empty spaces in with zeros. Now, once you've lined your decimals up by decimal point, you could treat the numbers the same way you treat words that you're putting in alphabetical order, which means that you go to the first, you know, when you're putting, when you're putting words in alphabetical order, you have a whole bunch of words that begin with A, right? You put them all together, well, they all have A as the first letter, so then you go to the second letter, and you sort them by the second letter, and on and on and on and on. Well, same thing with numbers that are decimals. Line them up by decimal point, and go one digit at a time. So I have here, here's my decimal point. My first decimal place, they're both sevens. I can't compare there, right? Well, look at my next decimal place. I have a one, and I have a zero. Which is greater? One. But, these are both negatives, and remember, the bigger the number, the lesser the value. So one, this one is actually less than this one. 0.714 came from who? Negative five sevenths. So negative five sevenths is less than negative 0.7, okay? Because since they're both negatives, the bigger number is actually lesser in value. Let's take a look at this one, okay? This one says two and three fifths compared to 2.6 repeating. 2 and 3 fifths compared to 2.6 repeating. Once again, let's go ahead and uh, set these up as decimals. 2 and 3 fifths is a decimal. We already know it's going to be 2 point something, so I'm going to say 3 divided by 5 equals, and I get 0.6, right? Well, at first shot, some of you think, oh, but that's equals. Let's think about it. This one is 2.6, and it stops, right? Well, what does 2.6 repeating do? It goes 2.6, and then if I get rid of the bar, it's going to keep giving me sixes forever, right? Well, what's this guy going to do if I stretch him out? What am I going to do with these empty spaces? Put sixes? No, they're going to be what? Zeros. So are these two numbers the same? No. Well, let's compare by digit. Twos, they're the same, can't compare here. Sixes, they're the same, can't compare here. Here, I have a six and a zero. Well, who's bigger? Six. So the winner here is this one. This one is the greater number. So once again, two and three fifths is less than 2.6 repeating, okay? These were positive, so we didn't have to flip it. Over here, these guys were negative, so the bigger number was actually the lesser number because they were both negative, okay? So how about if I have to put numbers in order from least to greatest or greatest to least that are of different formats. Some of them are fractions, some of them are decimals, some are positive, some are negative, right? What do I do? Well, once again, the easiest way to do it is to convert them all to decimal. So here's, I have two examples here that we're gonna look at and see if we can figure them out. All right, take a look here. We have 4 fifths, 0 0.5, 1 third, and 0.65. The first thing that should strike you is they're all positive. So in this one, we're not gonna have to worry about any of the negative stuff. But let's go ahead and convert. What is 4 fifths as a decimal? Well, 4 divided by 5 equals 0.8, right? So now here I'm going to write 
0.8. Here's 0.5. I'm going to line it up under. Because what I want to do is I want to line them up by their decimal points, okay? One third. One divided by three equals. That's 0.3 repeating, right? So I'm going to write 0.3 with a bar over it just in case I need it afterwards. And 0.65 is already 0.65, right? Okay, if we want to go ahead and fill in these empty spots, I'm going to put a zero here and a zero here. What am I going to put here? Not a zero, right? I'm going to put a three because it's 0.3 repeating. And let's compare. Let's go to the first digit. This one's actually really, really easy. What's the smallest number here? Eight, five, three, or six? It's three, right? So from least to greatest, my first number is one third, comma, that's gone. Then what's the next least one? 0.5, right? That's gone. Then 0.65. Then the last one, which is 0.80, which came from 4 fifths. Notice how when I write my answer, I don't write the converted numbers. I write the numbers in the original format they were given to me in the problem. Very important. Okay. Now this problem here has some negatives in it, so we have to be careful with that. So let's go ahead and, and once again change all to decimal and line them up by decimal point. Okay. Well, let's we can take care of the one that we already have. We already have 0.68, negative 0.68, and we have 0.7 which I'll make 0.70 to make it equivalent, all right? Now let's deal with our fractions. Well, we have negative 2 thirds, and 2 divided by 3 is 0.66 repeating, okay? So that's going to be negative 0.66. I'll put the bar there and then stretch it out later if I need it. And then 3 fourths, we should all know, is 0.75, right? So now, which one is lesser? Well, remember, we have two negatives here. They obviously are the lessers, but remember, in negatives, the bigger the number, the lesser in value. So who's bigger, 0.68 or 0.66? Well, 0.68 is bigger. So first is gonna be negative 0.68, then it's gonna be negative 2 thirds, Okay, after that's going to be who? 0.7. And then finally, the last one is 0.75, which came from 3 fourths. Okay.